We've been touched again this week by just how uncertain life is for all of us at the moment. I must admit, I was pretty much feeling like we were sticking our heads through the other side of this COVID thing. Everything was opening back up. You go down the streets and it felt pretty much like normal. And add to that the vaccine being rolled out or not being rolled out. And I was kind of feeling like we were pretty home and hosed. But the reality is it only takes two COVID cases at a hen's party. And then everything goes to custard and we're in total lockdown. Travel plans have changed, work stopped, schooling from home, churching from home, and pretty much everything from home. And then yesterday we're thrown into another tailspin in Brisbane. Everything's back on. I suppose it gave us a bit of a sense of what our friends in Sydney and Melbourne have been going through over these last 12 months, and we, we give you guys a shout out. You know, life as we've known it, it still has this high level of uncertainty. So today, when everything feels like you're walking on quicksand, I don't know about you, but I hunger for some solid ground. Something firm to trust in, some kind of foundation stones. And thanks be to God that Good Friday gives us some foundation truths for us to cling on to, that our whole faith is built upon. And that is the great thing about Good Friday. This Easter message is our rock. And these foundation stones, they come to light in this crucifixion story. And today, as I unpack them, I pray that you will feel more certain about what Jesus has done for you and what you mean to him. You know what? There's always going to be various degrees of uncertainty. Nothing is really that certain in our lives. But if our faith has some foundation stones that will hold us no matter what the storms are and no matter what comes your way, then we can know for certain that our God will prevail. The Bible reading from Luke that Lisa just read to us gives us this picture of the crucifixion. And we, we look down, we look into this disgusting story, this disgusting scene of people mocking, cursing, robbing Jesus of his possessions, while he slowly dies this most inhumane death. It's actually hard to fathom how people could gain pleasure out of being a part of this moment. It's actually beyond words that people could find joy out of watching someone die like this. And what's even harder to fathom is at a time when he was gasping for every breath. Jesus looks down on them. And of all the words he could say, he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. You know, Jesus isn't excusing their actions. 
He's not saying, look, for, they don't know what they're doing. They didn't mean to. Actually, they just slipped up. No one ever told them that you shouldn't hurt people. He's not saying forgive them because they don't know the pain that they're inflicting. You see, Jesus was looking at this from a spiritual perspective. And he, says, he sees them as people blinded and enslaved by sin. Jesus sees that the only hope is the freedom and new life that comes from knowing forgiveness of sin. So with blood running down his face from the crown of thorns that are pushed deep into his skull, gasping for air as he pushes down on the nails in his feet just to gain some relief from the nails in his hands. His body whipped and broken, struggling to stay conscious. And he looks down at these people Mocking, having fun and finding joy out of his every breath. And Jesus' focus was on forgiveness. Jesus' eyes were fixed on reconciling the whole world back to God. Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were separated from God, while we had no clue of the impact of and the decisions that we were, have made. At that point, Christ died for us. So life will be full of uncertainties. We don't know what tomorrow will bring. However, today as we focus on this crucifixion story, we can find peace and resolve by focusing on what is certain. I think we all need some foundation stones. So church today, God wants you to know this. He wants you to know what is certain in a very uncertain world. Firstly, he wants you to know that you are loved. John 3.16 tells us that God loved us so much that he was prepared to let Jesus go through all this pain, this suffering for each one of us. Friends, you are loved in a way that is almost too difficult to get your head around. Foundation stone number one, you are loved. Foundation stone number two, and you can cling to this. Jesus hung on the cross so that you could be reconciled. Reconciled is not really a word we use much today. But it's about the fact that a penalty had to be paid for your sin and mine. And Jesus paid that debt. Jesus took our place so that our sin was cancelled on the cross. 
so that we didn't have to pay any penalty for our sin. There's an old song that sums this up and it says, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain on me, but Jesus washed it white as snow. That's our story, that we have been reconciled. And this is recognizing that Jesus took the punishment for my sin and yours, so that as Jesus hung on the cross and endured immense physical pain, at the same time, he was being inflicted with spiritual pain. The sin of the whole world inflicted on innocent man. And foundation stone number three, and this is where we really want to lean in this morning. Forgiveness is God's way of bringing you close. You can know forgiveness in your life. You see, when we wrong someone, or when we've been wronged by someone, it's almost like a wall goes up. It's like we build this thing between us and them. The relationship changes, either consciously or subconsciously. It might impact the way we feel about them, what we might say about them or speak about them, or even how we care about them. When relationship has been broken, this wall goes up. And friends, if left alone, the wall gets bigger and the impact even greater. And I'm sure we can all think of times where we've seen this. And you know what? Usually we're pretty good at seeing it in other people. But forgiveness is God's way of breaking down the walls. Forgiveness is God's way of breaking down the walls between us and him and between us and others. You see, when Jesus looked down from the cross and with the only words that he could say, he said, forgive them. He was saying, God, I don't want there to be any walls that separate people from ever being close to you. Forgive them, God. Break down the walls. Forgive them. So as we think about this idea of forgiveness, I just want to touch on three things that impact us experience, impact us experiencing God's forgiveness. Firstly, we are impacted by the walls because maybe we've never or we haven't asked for forgiveness. We haven't actually recognized that that's a thing. But 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to give, forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, early on in the 12-step program, it talks about laying down your stuff. Confession is a big part of it. And when we talk about saying sorry, we're not talking about the little kid's sorry. Now, I don't know, none of us ever learnt this. No, it was, wasn't a taught behaviour that someone had to say, look, we're going to teach you how to do this as a little kid. But ironically, how come every kid learns how to say sorry in the most um, 
uncaring way possible. You know, the mum says, right, you've hurt your brother, now say sorry. Sorry. We all know how to make it sound as little as, with as little caring as possible. We don't really mean it. That's not the sorry that we're talking about here. Because that's not really saying sorry. That's being, a, for once, obedient. You see, confession and saying sorry is about acknowledging where you've gone wrong. How you'll do it different, even better. Saying sorry is knowing in your heart that you want to make right so that this isn't a thing anymore. That's confession. That's asking for forgiveness. And secondly, forgiveness is impacted because sometimes we struggle to forgive ourselves. We struggle. Maybe God's let it go, but we haven't forgiven ourselves. Now, I want you to know that we are in a spiritual battle, and Ephesians 6.12 there, it focuses on this. The enemy, the, the enemy wants to do all he can to keep those walls up between you and God. Whatever he can do, things to keep you separated from God, he's, he's in for it. So he speaks lies at us. He's going to tell you things to make you feel that you aren't really forgiven. You're not worthy. You're too bad. Don't ask for forgiveness because you're just going to do it again. God doesn't trust you. You've tried this before. Give up. Shut up. You're a stuff up. Have you ever heard these lies? And often the thing that separates us from God is not his forgiveness of us. We keep the wall up because we haven't learned how to forgive ourselves. So if this is you, remember these foundation stones. You're loved. Your sin has been paid for. And Jesus died for you. And despite the enemy's best efforts to keep you down and those walls up, you can be forgiven. You can know the closeness of God in your life. Know those truths today. And finally, sometimes forgiveness is impacted because we struggle to forgive others. I know that this one is a tough one for many people. Many people who have been wronged. And by no means do I want to trivialise the pain that others have caused you. But I think when God made the decision to make this a thing, when God thought, actually, forgiveness needs to be a part of relationship, when that was on His radar, it was because He knew he knew the impact it would have on us, it would have on our relationships if we didn't. He's a great author, a bit of a hero of our faith, C.S. Lewis. And he wrote this. He said, everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have someone to forgive. Everyone says forgiveness is a lovely idea until they have someone to forgive. Our God wants to see us free from our hurt and pain. He wants to see relationships restored both with God and with others. And He knows 
that a spirit of unforgiveness only builds up the walls that Jesus died to bring down. Friends, there is a power, a freedom, a weight that is lifted off you that only comes through forgiveness. Forgiveness is God's gift to us. Reconciliation is God's gift to us. New beginnings is God's gift to us. This is our hope. And this can be your story. You want to stand on some solid ground today in an ever-changing world? Well, take this to the bank. Because this is solid ground. This is a firm foundation that you can be certain of today and every day. God loves you. He died for you. And he longs to see you close to him. You know, when Jesus hung on the cross, as much as he didn't want to go through all that, he was prepared to because he knew it would mean something. He was prepared to pay the cost because he knew it would mean something. So I want to ask you today, what does it mean to you? What did the what does the price that Jesus paid mean to you today? As you sit and watch this. And through this time of reflection now, do you just consider the walls that have been broken down? Is it that you cling on to forgiveness, on the fact that God loves you? And maybe you stare into the flame of that candle and see the power of God and what he did just for you. You know, for some of you, as the band sings, you need to kneel at your lounge. Maybe today you've learned afresh just the impact of what Jesus has done so that you can be free, so that you can be close to God. So the band's going to sing, and I pray that you, through this moment, We'll be able to focus on Jesus and picture him gasping for air, saying, forgive them. Because he did it for you and he did it for me. Let's experience a fresh and a new all that Jesus did so that you could know life in all its fullness and you can know a life with God. Amen. Let's have this moment together as the band sings.